we'll start playing the music. I think we record. Okay, we're live streaming yes. now. That's all right. We'll start Share the video, the I think we record. All right, we can re record whenever you want to.
afternoon, good evening, and good morning to all of you joining us from all over the world. Welcome to the Saturday Tech Talk, a series of webinars hosted by the British Council in collaboration with Joe Dale and ITEL team. My name is Francis Sinanu, and I'm with ITEL, Indonesia Technology Enhanced Language Learning. Um, last year, ITEL also collaborated with the British Council, and we had two series of webinars with a total of 22 sessions. So this is a very exciting um, afternoon for me to continue the collaboration and have our second uh, webinar series. We have more than 2,000 participants registered in this event this afternoon. So I can see in the chat now people are saying hello from Indonesia. We have from 24 countries, Indonesia, UK, Malaysia, Taiwan. We have from Singapore, China, Vietnam. Hello, teachers. Please drop um, a hello in the chat room so we can see where you're from. Mostly are from Indonesia. Now, we have 2,000, uh, more than 2,000 people registered. Unfortunately, the Zoom uh, capacity is only for 1,000 participants. So if you have friends who would like to join this session, let them know that we are also live streamed on YouTube. So they can go to the British Council Indonesia YouTube channel and watch the session there. All right. We still have um, people signing in, more to come now in the more 500. So I'm sure we will reach the full capacity of the room. And that's why please tell your friends, your colleagues, other teachers and ed tech enthusiasts to join the session on YouTube. All right, before we start with the first session of this entire Saturday Tech Talk series, Please join me to welcome Mr. Colm Downs, Director of English Education and Society, British Council Indonesia, to give his opening remarks. Colm, over to you. Thank you very much, Francis, and Salamat Siang Samoa. Good afternoon, good morning. Hello, everybody. Uh, greetings from Jakarta. Uh, my name is Colm, and I'm so excited to be here today uh, for quite a long time. Um, I have been with my team and with uh, ITEL and with Joe Dale, we've been wanting to come together and design this webinar series for English teachers everywhere. Um, and now it's happening and you're here. Um, so thank you for coming on a Saturday. Uh, we think it will be worth it. We think you're going to learn a lot, that you're going to enjoy the next hour. Um, I'm not going to say very much. I just wanted really to say that thank you very much for your hard work as teachers. This webinar series is about technology and English teaching. It's not all high tech, it's for beginners as well as uh, people with a little bit more experience. It's for laptops, it's for mobile phones, it's for teaching English remotely, it's for teaching English using technology in the classroom. Um, I think uh, whoever you are, if you're an English teacher, uh, working in a university or working with uh, teenagers or working with young students, you are going to learn something today and every Saturday, well, not quite every Saturday, um, our webinars are every two weeks. So uh, we'll give you a break in between. So thank you very much for coming. I'm going to hand back to Francis and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the webinar. Thanks, Francis. Thank you, Colm. Ladies and gentlemen, it's official now. The entire Saturday Tech Talks uh, series um, is already uh, opened, and I'm going to start with the first session this afternoon. So because this is the first inaugural uh, session of the entire series, um, I'm going to uh, serve as an MC for this afternoon. I would like to invite um, the first speaker of today's uh, se session, Gumawan Jati. Okay, Dr. Kumawang Jati is a senior lecturer and he's teaching English at Bandung Institute of Technology. Um, he completed his master's education at the University of Warwick and has been involved in computer assisted language learning ever since um, his master's education. He got his doctoral degree from Indonesia Education University. And Pajati, that's how I call him, and that's how people, teachers all here in Indonesia call him, is very active in giving seminars and workshops uh, related to the use of technology for learning um, at universities and schools all over Indonesia. And of course, Pajati is the president of ITEL. So, 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gumawang Jati. Thank you, Francis. Uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, good morning. And I'm very happy to be with you again. We met maybe at uh, the beginning of the pandemic. We are working with the Protest Council. And also, uh, use... later, you will have Joe Dale that's uh, with us as well at that time. Um, so I will start my present presentation today. Let me start with my uh, sharing my screen. Uh, okay. Um, today I'm going to share with you uh, about artificial intelligence for ELT, but it's only practical ideas. The idea is just to show you that there are some AI that is practical and can be used in, a, in the classroom. So some ideas that uh, you can take away later on, you can practice it uh, in your classroom. For university, and possibly that's for uh, high school or junior high, yeah. So um, this is the prediction from UNESCO. Uh, the next uh, 10 years, probably, or five years, that uh, education will transform by AI. The teaching tools, the ways of learning, the access to the knowledge, and even teacher training will be uh, changed or revolutionized. That's the prediction from uh, UNESCO. So uh, I'm going to give you some example later on um, to practice on or to play with uh, in the AI. Um, now, the AI for teachers, it's uh, purposely to reduce the workload and to make the output more effective on that. Yeah, for learners, there's more uh, tools to play with or tools to accompany them, become their friend when uh, they learn English or they learn not necessarily English, but they learn maybe at the subject as well later on. So the role of AI will be personal tutor, can be a friend, um, for a teacher can be an assistant to help um, to reduce uh, the workload in a, in a teaching. Um, this is an example of reducing workload. Maybe some of you are familiar with lessonwriter.com. If you are not, this is an example of AI that help you when you're going to prepare a lesson. What you need is a text or a video. When you have a video, then you're going to design a book a lesson around the video, you have to pay. But if you have a text, it's free. So it's a freemium tools that you can use. You go to lessonwriter.com and register. Then what you need is a text. Then you give it or you input it into this website. And there are three options. The first option is express, meaning that a lesson writer will generate everything. Yeah generate the questions, comprehension question, generate the uh, focus for grammar, grammar, also generate the vocabulary to be thought inside the classroom and with the exercise, of course. If you choose standard, then you write your own comprehension questions. Yeah. And then the rest will be uh, done by the uh, lesson writer or the AI. If you choose detail, then, uh, the AI will ask permission and you can uh, take uh, a part in designing the lesson. Yeah. So my experience, I use Express that give me a good idea what uh, the lesson will be look like. Then I second time, I try it with standard so that I can insert my ideas there. Yeah. I haven't really tried detail one. Uh, for that, I use Express and I use Standard, and I'm very happy with uh, with my lesson. Yeah, so that's a uh, lesson writer. Probably will help you preparing a lesson if you have a good text later on. Um, you can click the tutorial here later on when uh, you got my slide. I'm going to share you uh, with you uh, my slide later at the end. Yeah, this is an example of AI that uh, we can use as an English teacher. Yeah. Another AI, it's uh, called Quillians. Some of you may be familiar with that. Yeah, Quillians.com. Again, this is a question generator. So if you have a text, you should take a long time to compose a questions for the students. Then this one can give uh, 
a lot of questions, then you can select later on. Comprehension questions, multiple choice questions, uh, given. Uh, if you have a text, they will give you probably more than 50 type of questions that you can choose from that. So what you have to do, uh, go to Williams and then register. Again, this is a freemium. You can use the free version. Uh, you submit the content, then you choose the keyword because they generate the question based on the keyword. So if you need the, uh, if you, they will provide you with keywords. If you don't like the keyword, then you can omit some, and then you can put on some more uh, keyword. Then review the content for typos and things like that. Then um, they will generate the questions and note for you. So it's a good uh, friend giving giving you a draft of uh, questions before uh, giving to the uh, student. So this is an example of AI that's reduced the workload of uh, the teacher. So become a friend, help you writing the draft of lesson, your lesson plan. And also uh, if you have a text, they will generate uh, text uh, questions for you. Yeah. Another one, um, if you're teaching with YouTube video, for example, yeah, there is a skimthrough.ai. This is a AI that will generate a word clouds before you teach a video. Usually you give introduction using a cloud word. That's, a, that's one, one way so that you can talk about the vocabulary, you can give the introduction and so on and so on then uh, skim through is a good one good tool so that you can get uh, the cloud word you know uh, you you can go through very uh, quickly and then uh, they will generate it uh, for you yeah another one uh, that might be useful if you are using a video is uh, transcribing youtube videos um, because uh, you don't need to watch the entire and then listen three times, four times. With this one, then they will give a transcript uh, for you. Yeah. So that from that transcript, then you can get the script and you can give it to Quillians, for example, to generate the questions. Yeah. So if you have a video, put that uh, in the app typestudio.co then you got the text, put the text in the quillions, and that will generate the question. So that's uh, reducing the time again. Uh, maybe not perfect because this is AI, but at least you got the draft to start with. Yeah, it's helping you. Okay, um, that's uh, YouTube. Now let's move on to AI for students to learn. Yeah, there are some more AI, of course, but. Uh, that's an example that's uh, reducing uh, the workload of the teachers. Now, AI for students to learn, there are more. I'm going to mention some just to give you uh, ideas what's out there. Yeah. The first one, it's a reading. Uh, if you go to ReadLine, for example, then this AI will help the students with vocabulary. Yeah, when they hoover the word and then they will be translated. It's not only for English. It's for a lot of languages. For example, if you learn Russian or you are Russian, then you learn English and so on. Uh, try it. Then what's good about this? It will create a library, personal library for students. They give the word lace and then they will provide flashcard to do the exercise on their own. So it's uh, good for self-study. Yeah, it's a... Uh, creating a vocabulary bank, something like that, yeah, for the student. That's a red line. Uh, another AI that's a quite popular is uh, something like natural reader, for example. Yeah, they will read the text for you. So it's a, it's a robot that will read a PDF, books, web pages for the students. So the students can read together with the robot or they read and see the word and they listen how the words are pronounced. Or if you got really tired of looking at the screen, then maybe you can do something else and listen to somebody. It's not somebody, it's a robot uh, reading that the text for you while you're cooking, while you're driving, 
Yeah, so that one will help uh, the students to get the exposure of the language. Yeah, this is uh, reading and vocabulary. Another popular one, it's AI for writing. Uh, when you are teaching writing, for example, uh, a lot of teachers will trap into teaching vocabulary and teaching uh, grammar, uh, spelling, and so on. Um, that now can be given to AI. The writing teacher, they concentrate on the meaning of the word, how ideas are structured, how arguments are support well supported, and so on, the coherence, and so on. Yeah, then uh, the vocabulary, the grammar, the word choice can be given to an AI uh, along the process. Yeah. Um, when I'm teaching a university students, for example, the first years undergraduate, usually I use, uh, I ask them to consult with the AI before they give their work to me. Yeah. The first one, I will ask them to go to outright.com just to check spelling and grammar. So they write the first draft, they check the spelling and grammar with the outright.com. That's a freemium. Second time after they uh, revise that, I will ask them to go to prowritingaid.com to check again the smelling, spelling, grammar, and style checking. Yeah, they will give a lot of advice there. Again, it's a freemium. I always advise them to use the free version. Yeah. After that draft, then I will ask them to go to paperrater.com. In a paperrater.com, uh, they can create their word. Yeah. But it's again, it's only the grammar, it's only the word choice, it's only the style and vocabulary, but not how the paragraph form a unity of coherence. That's become my part. Yeah. So I'm not teaching the grammar, I'm asking them or my students to consult with this AI. Yeah. Another AI that worth trying is virtualwritingtutor.com. They can uh, give advice, uh, feedback for assignment uh, in the essay form. I haven't used that with my students, but I use it with my try for myself for several times and give a very detailed feedback about uh, how are the argument are presented. It's not enough example, things like that. It's not perfect yet, but at least it gives the uh, writer, okay, you have to look at this again. Careful, you have to look at that and give some advice there. Worth trying, again, the AI is still growing, but uh, with this one, at least will help the students to revise their writing step by step or their writing assignment in the form of essay step by step uh, yeah, and give some advice there. That's a uh, virtual uh, writing tutor.com, worth trying. Yeah. Now, there are tools, a lot of tools out there available with integrated AI. For sure, there are many more worth trying. Yeah. Now, the teacher can share some responsibility with the student. Learn grammar on your own, and you have to trust them. Learn the vocabulary on your own using read line. Yeah, things like that. So share responsibility, encourage them to have proactive attitude toward the learning. Yeah, be an independent learner. Then I will look at your arguments. I will look at how you structure your sentences, the meaning of your word, but not the grammar point. Yeah, because that's already uh, the AI. If you are teaching pronunciation, for example, there are a lot of AI that can help you. Yeah, for pronouncing, for instance, Elsa. Yeah, there are a lot out there. I give you an example of some uh, for this time. Okay, AI and testing. There are going to be a lot of AI uh, use in the testing. This is one example uh, from the British Council. If you go to EnglishCourt.com, go to your Google Google Play Store, 
or your app stores, then install it. Then you can test your English in 30 minutes. Grammar, vocabulary, reading, and listening. Um, it is free. If you want to download your certificate or your score, then you have to pay. It's not that expensive, actually. But at least you know um, what's your English like in 30 minutes or 40 minutes because this uh, test is uh, a lot of AI is uh, being used in this one. Yeah, for uh, scoring. Okay. Um, AI as a potential and benefit for education could improve the working life of the teacher, like I gave you an example, and also will be a friend or learning journeys for the students. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. If you want to have my slide, you can go to bit.ly slash pc minus jati or just uh, take a picture of this, then you can get uh, the slide and the tutorial if you're interested in some AI that I introduced to you. There are many more out there for sure, yeah. because well, with a short time, I'm just introducing that AI can reduce the workload of the teacher, AI can be used by students to accompany them while they are learning. Okay, if you want to know more about ITEL, you can go to itel.org. Or .id. Thank you very much, and uh, give it back to Francis. Hi, Francis. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Pajati, for sharing all the wonderful tools that teachers can use and um, to help them in their teaching and learning in the classroom. Uh, we have questions here, Pajati. If you can look at the Q and A um, room sure. there, there are questions. Some have been answered. But we also have questions in the chat. So um, teachers, participants, attendees, if you have questions, I would like to invite you to direct the questions in the Q&A uh, button and not in the chat room. OK, Pajeti, we have about five minutes. Oh, no, actually, we have a little bit more than five minutes for Q&A. So let's go and answer the questions, Pajeti. Yeah, um, there is one. one. Yes. There is one from Berlin. Berlin Siparani. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we get the webs that help us teaching phonetics and pronunciation? Um, pronunciation, yes. You can go to Elsa. E L S E oh, S A, I think. Elsa, that's in the um, Google Play or App Stores that will teach uh, pronunciation uh, step by step. Uh, that the AI will function as a personal tutor and scoring and give questions they have to answer. They give few words to practice, then give uh, the students the test as well, whether they can move to the next level or not. Yeah. Uh, from Jessica, AI for mathematics or students. Uh, I don't know about mathematics. Yeah, I cannot. Uh, answer that very quickly um okay yeah all right um we also have um a question here um what do you think or maybe later in the panel this question okay so but for teachers who would like to get the presentation i think um Pajeti has already shared the link for you to download the particip uh, the presentation slide deck um, Pajati, we have one from um, Sita Pradita Nuraida. What would you recommend for yeah. junior high school students? Uh, Ibu Sita, uh, junior... can you specify what do you want to ask? Recommend for what? Are the tools? Okay, uh, Pajati, junior high general, school. General yeah. Yeah. Uh, junior high schools, maybe uh, Ibu Sita, you can try Ritlang, ritlang.com, then uh, practice that then you can uh, give advice to your student and how to use it. You have to try it first. Yeah. When you try it, then um, you are familiar with that, you're happy with that, then you, you can use that with the student. So the student will be very happy uh, having their own collection of flashcards and things like that. Yeah. Okay. We have another one here. Um, do you have... Do you have any recommendation, Pajati, AI for assessing speaking? 
AI for assassin speaking uh, now is Paito. It's called ORAI. O R A I. Uh, that's for uh, assessment speaking. It's uh, no longer free right now, but it's not that expensive and it's worth trying. It's good for um, public speaking. Yeah, they will give a personal tutor, personal coach for uh, public speaking. Yeah. Okay, we, we have a recommendation here uh, in the chat as well from Joe um, Nualang. So maybe you can check that later as well. Um, Ibu Leni Irianti. Yeah? Okay, Pajati, we have uh, questions keep coming up that now, Pajati, if you can catch up in the Q&A. Um, so I'm gonna go to Antran. Uh, there is a page with support. Oh, this is a comment so that I can, it's shortly.com. Okay, this is a comment for, for teachers. How about this one, Pajati, about IELTS speaking? Do you have AI AI pages to examine IELTS, the speaking part? Uh, the speaking part for IELTS, uh, well, that is not particularly for IELTS though. For speaking, there are a lot of chatbots that uh, the students can practice, um, but not specifically for uh, IELTS test actually. It's more for general purpose. Okay. So not specifically for IELTS, but it, uh, teachers can also try that one. Okay. Um, how about uh, this one? Probably Pajati. This is yes. from Nurmala Simpolan. This is interesting. I'm wondering if you have identified some AI resources that require low bandwidth of internet for students in remote areas. Um, when it's a web, uh, for example, right, read length uh, doesn't need really a high bandwidth for that. Um, so uh, Elsa, for example, um, doesn't really require a high bandwidth because it's only text and voice. When it's got text, voice, and video, that's require high bandwidth. Yeah. So. I think there are a lot of AIs that they can use. A lot of chatbots, they're using text. When they use text to practice vocabulary, for instance, then that's a low bandwidth and should be okay with 3G areas, not necessarily high-speed internet connection. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Pajati. Uh, I hope that uh, answers. Um, this is a question from Yusnimar. Yus Yus um, Regarding creating lessons on YouTube, uh, you mentioned about it, but it's not clear for uh, you, Snimar. Would you explain more on how we develop YouTube videos to be more interesting? Oh, okay. Before you're teaching using uh, video, usually you have to introduce vocabulary, you introduce the topics, you introduce the, uh, uh, the settings and things like that. And usually, uh, the teacher will need a, a kind of cloud, word cloud, uh, as uh, introducing uh, the, the video. Yeah, and that's one way. Another one is um, uh, will transcribe your video. Usually, you watch the video and then you create the questions and you listen again and again, and it's uh, take a longer time. But when it's trans transcribed by AI that will uh, make our burden uh, lighter, shorter. Yeah, then we can create the question because it's uh, from the sound, it's become a text. And with that AI, if you want to cut the video, you don't need to cut the video itself. But then if you cut the text, the automatically in the video will be deleted in that particular part, things like that. So. Um, after you got the text, for example, then you can give it to uh, Quilliams. Then they will generate the questions for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we have questions uh, about presentation files. So please, uh, you can go to the link provided there. The, 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 the sh uh, screen is still sharing the link and you can download it, right? So um, for those who would like to get the file, the slides via Gmail, you can just download it and it will be available. 
Okay, uh, Pajati, we have a question. Are there any recommended um, recommended AI that can be embedded to our LMS? Let's say Canvas or other LMS. Um, mm, very good questions. Uh, AI to embed the LMS. Uh, to be honest, I'm not quite sure. What usually uh, I do is I put the link in the LMS. You have to use this. Uh, for example, you have to use uh, writing uh, tutor.com. Then I put that link in my LMS so that the students, they do not need to uh, memorize all of those uh, addresses. Yeah. Write your paragraph, check with the AI. Here is the link. I give them the link to the uh, website. Check your essay. Then I give the link to the, uh, 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 to the website there. Click here, things like that but not really embed that in uh, the LMS, yeah. Okay, so that's your uh, tips for uh, sharing the AI to your students through the yes. LMS, Pai, yeah? Okay, we have a question here about, about listening skills. Do you have any recommendation about um, tools, AIs that we can use um, to teach listening? It's not really, AI with, and listening, and that's interesting. Uh, there is a website called Ello. E L L three L O E L L L O dot org. That will uh, give you a lot of resources for listening with questions, uh, with games, but there is no AI. This is just like listening library online. Thousands of uh, exercises uh, with the listening. And also, it's not always native speaker. Uh, for example, a Chinese student will talk to American, American talk to British, British talk to, you know. So it's world english -ish. Yeah, It's really a realistic way, I think. It's nat more natural compared to uh, uh, listening that we have usually get from a book and things like that. Yeah, But uh, with AI, I'm not sure. Uh, listening, you need a lot of practice, a lot of exposure, I think. Yeah not necessarily with the help of AI. But hello, that will be good. And there are a lot of listening exercise in the British Council website. Yeah, it's a lot of stories for kids, a lot of animation and so on in the website of British Council. Okay. All right, Pajati, we also have a question here about integrating the four skills, speaking, reading, listening, and writing for your um, language classes. Do you have a, a tool, an AI, that integrates those uh, skills? Um, actually, not yet. Now they're working on, well, look, the, um, the AI for the students, they become friends. If you are practicing writing, then there is a AI for writing. If you are practicing your reading and vocabulary, there is a friend uh, AI that can help the students. Yeah. If you are a teacher, there are some AIs that help you preparing your uh, reading class, preparing your writing class, preparing your you know things like that. But not in the form of a book. This is AI for unit one, listening, <laughs> reading and writing, things like that. So it's more on uh, something uh, not really attached like a course book, you know. But there's always a friend uh, to be around in your mobile. <laughs> yeah, you have to explore that more. I give you some example actually, yeah. Okay, thank you, Pajati. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, time's up for the first question and answer session. We will have another Q&A session after the second presenter. Thank you very much, Pajati, for sharing um, Welcome. Inform information for the teachers. Um, teachers, we're going to continue with the second uh, session, and if you have questions, you can still continue typing your questions in the Q&A box there, and Joe and Pajati will um, address your questions later. So let's go to Mr. Joe Dale, the MFL guru. Uh, he's going to talk for the second uh, session today, and before he starts, allow me to uh, read some of his um, 
this is a lot actually, but let me just introduce who Joe Dale is for those who don't know who Joe is. Joe Dale is an independent languages consultant from the UK uh, who works with a range of organizations, including, of course, the British Council. He was host of the Times Educational Supplement uh, MFL Forum for six years. Is that right, Joe? Yeah, that's right. And a former SSAT language lead practitioner. Uh, Joe is a regular conference speaker and recognized expert on technology and language learning. He has spoken at conferences and run training courses all over the world. Um, he was a member of the Ministerial Steering Group on Languages for the UK Coalition Government and advised on the LinguaNet Worldwide Project for the Language Company. Joe created ICT activities. Um, if you can see, he posted a lot of uh, links for you teachers in the chat um, because he has worked with um, uh, many organizations for the new Institut Francais, all a network for languages, primary French project, um, Nouveau Bleu Blanc uh, Rouge courses, and was shortlisted for um, NAACE Impact Award in 2013. Joe supported the Erasmus Plus project, Conflict to Cooperation with five European countries, and is currently involved in support in the Supporting Schools Reform in Algeria project through the British Council. So he has a wide experience dealing with teachers from different um, backgrounds, I believe, so high and low ex as well, right, Joe? Uh, mm -hmm. Joe was recently described in a Guardian article as the MFL guru, the modern foreign language guru, and he is the man behind the MFL with a Twitter Rati uh, podcast. So if you would like to join, please follow the hashtag MFL Twitter at the podcast and listen to more uh, that Joe has to say. But for now, Joe, please, time is yours. Thank you ever so much for that lovely introduction. Let me just click, uh, share my screen and uh, welcome everybody to uh, this session. Um, having, oh, let me just move that out of the way. Sorry about this, hang on, two seconds. Oh, got far too many things open. Hang on. There we are. Oh, hang on. Oh, sorry about this. Hang on. I thought I had to. Oh, there we are. Okay, all good. So, um, following uh, uh, Pak Jati's uh, fantastic presentation, I don't know if I am a, a guru to do with technology, but anyway, let's uh, let's try the try my best. So. Uh, welcome everybody to this session. I'm going to speak for about 20 minutes on uh, virtual reality and how it can be used in the languages classroom. I've deliberately put in the word exploring uh, virtual reality because I would love to uh, get your opinions and your thoughts and your questions in the chat. Um, I've got um, my iPad running by the side of my, uh, my Mac so I'll be able to see all your questions coming in, which is great. And um, let's make a start. So... Oh, let me just click here. Here we are. Okay, so as you can see on the on the screen, I've got my uh, Twitter handle there. I've got um, over thirty two thousand followers on Twitter. So if you would like to follow me, I'd love to uh, to follow you back. Uh, if you have any questions to do with this presentation or anything to do with technology and languages, feel free to uh, to uh, follow me and to ask me those questions. That's fine. Likewise, my email address is there as well. And so what I'm going to do now, there we are, is go on to the next slide. Lovely. So um, a little bit about my background, if that's okay, first of all. So um, my background is I'm a, a former modern foreign languages teacher. I taught French for 13 years, three years at secondary school level, and then 10 years at middle school level, and nine to 13 year old. So I've got upper primary and secondary school experience. And for the last um, uh, 10, 11 years or so, I've been an independent languages consultant. And as Francis just said, I've been doing lots and lots of different uh, uh, work with uh, organizations from around the world. And during the pandemic, I've been doing a huge number of webinars, which I'll be talking uh, about in more detail later on. But in this session, we're going to be looking at virtual reality ideas, and in particular, uh, some Google tools, and then some other uh, websites that you can use for uh, promoting um, language learning in uh, virtual reality. And I really hope you find this useful. Okay, so the first website we're going to have a look at <coughs> is called Arts and Culture. I'm just going to click on the link and come out to my presentation. And I can then, there we are, I can then uh, give you a quick run through of how this works. So uh, this is a, a free website, Arts and Culture from Google. I'm going to click on the Van Gogh option 
and just show you how it works. So if I come down to here, for example, and I find the, the classic um, painting that Van Gogh did uh, of the famous bedroom scene, uh, the first thing I can do is I can click on the little uh, zoom icon here, and you'll see on the right-hand side, I can click on the little plus icon here. And if I really want to, I can zoom right in so I can actually see the, um, the, 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 the paint strokes on the canvas. Uh, so if you're, um, if you're teaching uh, art or you, you like using authentic um, uh, images within your lessons, then this could be a great starting point. So uh, this is, as I said, the classic painting. So you could use it as a model for getting the students to talk about what's in the picture and then get them to draw their own artwork and get them to, to describe it if you wanted to. If I go further down, you'll notice that uh, bottom or in the middle here, it says view in street view. Uh, if I click on that, what happens is I'm actually able to go using virtual reality straight to the Musée d'Orsay in Paris and see what the picture actually looks like in context, um, which is really, really cool. And then from there, I can actually, if I wanted to, I can then move around the, uh, the museum a little bit. Um, and I can, you know, I can go here, for example, and I can go and look at other pictures. So you're looking at the picture in context. I'm sure we all recognize that uh, classic from Van Gogh as well. So that's essentially the idea of using a website such as um, Arts and Culture. And you can go around museums, you can go to theaters, you can essentially visit the world. And while it's very difficult now to travel because of the pandemic, it's a really nice way, I think, of uh, promoting culture and bringing the learning to life. In the next slide, I'm going to talk about um, the same website. And what I've done here, is I've made a little video of this uh, this self-portrait version uh, uh, of, um, uh, of Van Gogh's uh, famous picture. And by using my uh, iPad, I was able to click on the uh, augmented reality option, which you'll see on the screen is here. You can't do this in the web version, but you can do it by the iPad. I've made a little screen recording using Zoom, and this is the uh, uh, result. So this is an idea of how you could use a painting for promoting language. Here we go. Another cool feature of the Google Arts and Culture website and app is uh, augmented reality. So on this page here, we have a portrait by Van Gogh called Self-Portrait with Grey Felt Hat. And if I want to get this onto my iPad, all I have to do is simply scan the QR code, which I have here, which is a Chrome extension, launch the camera on my iPad and scan away. Okay, by doing that, a little notification comes up. It opens up automatically onto my uh, iPad, and now I can now do a new share and actually show you my iPad screen, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I click share like that. I now need to go into AirPlay. So I tap screen mirroring. I select the zoom option, and it will now produce a tick on the screen. And as you can now see, you can now see Van Gogh's picture. So if I now tap on the view in augmented reality button, bottom left there, you'll be able to see my screen and I can now tap on the portrait at the bottom of my screen like that. And all of a sudden I have an augmented reality version of this painting like that. So if you were doing, for example, talking about physical description or colors or whatever it might be that you want to talk about, this is an augmented reality version of Van Gogh's favorite famous uh, painting. Amazing stuff. You can also take a picture as well. If you tap the white shutter button there, it takes a picture and saves it to your camera roll. And there we are. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a little insight on how you can use uh, Google Arts and Culture for virtual reality and augmented reality ideas. Okay, another idea is to use Google Earth. So I'm just going to launch Google Earth very quickly now. Uh, wait for it to load up. I'll just close that tab there. Um, there we are. So Google Earth is just about to launch and we'll be able to see the globe in a moment. And once it's loaded, you'll notice that on the left hand side, there are lots of different icons. And the one I'm going to talk about today is the one that says I'm feeling lucky, which looks like um, a dice or as one should say officially a die as it's in the singular. So you can see there it is. And if I click on the I'm feeling lucky option, what will happen is it will go literally anywhere in the world. I have no idea where we're going. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I've just clicked on 
Uh, I'm feeling lucky and we're going to Nanshan Island in the South China Sea. Wow. So the idea here using virtual reality is then to ask the students to describe what they can see. So I'm using uh, that random nature, which I think is uh, exciting for students. I'm asking them to describe the area. So in this case, we could talk about, okay, so we can see an island, we can see the sea around the island, we can see some uh, green, we can talk about different colors and so on and so forth. Now, the next thing I'm going to try and do is drag the peg man onto the island. I would imagine it's going to say that the there's no street view. Yeah, can you see at the bottom it says there's no street view because it's so remote. So that's fine. I can now click on the random icon again. I'm feeling lucky and go somewhere completely different. Right, this time we're going to Canada. So completely different. Okay, so this time I will be asking again the students to describe what they can see. And from there, I can now drag on the little peg man here and just drop the peg man there. And now we're going to go into Google Street View, uh, which is lovely. So it's really just remote places where you don't get the Street View data. So as a result of that, perfect. I can now ask the, uh, the students what they can see. Where are we? Are we in, the, uh, in a town? Are we in the countryside? What uh, language can you recognize? So this is all about sort of identifying um, different cultural landmarks, asking maybe students what the weather's like, uh, what, can they, what can they see? Can they see any human beings? Uh, we can't hear, but if you could see some human beings, we could say, okay, what, um, what have they been doing? How are they feeling? What are they going to do? And so on and so forth. So it's really just the, the, the random context, which is the exciting thing here. Now we're going to Hawaii, um, we're going to the Hawaii state capital. Okay. So again, uh, when we're hovering over the top, you could ask the students to describe what they can see. And then we can then go straight into Street View like this and see what happens right now. Okay, so we're going into Street View and let's see. Okay, so I'm hoping we're going to be able to see somebody, but obviously not. <laughs> Never mind. So again, you could ask uh, the students what they can see and so on and so forth. Let's just try one more. Sometimes you actually are able to go inside. Uh, uh, a particular building. Now we're going to Buenos Aires in Argentina to the uh, Museo Histórico Nacional. Um, so that's really cool. And let's try this one. Okay, so having asked them what they can see, let's see what happens when we go a bit closer. Okay, so perfect. So very different. So you could, you could say, okay, so I can see lots of cars. Wow, so some authentic artwork. Um, Brilliant. So you can see uh, here, you can then sort of, uh, you could zoom in and ask some questions. So yeah, there seems to be nobody around in Google Street View at the moment, <laughs> but that's fine. And then you could, if you wanted to, you could then move forward um, along the street until you, uh, oh, there we are, we have someone on the, there we are, we have a person here. Let's just scroll around. So we could say, okay, so where's this person going? How's this person feeling? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So that's that's the idea of using Google Earth. There's lots of other things you can do with Google Earth. Google Earth as well. You can create what's called a Google Earth project, which means that you can put uh, pins uh, on Google Earth, and then you can uh, jump from pin to pin. And with each pin, you can also um, ask the students to write a little description about what they can see, and then you could then record your screen using a tool such as Screencastify or Flipgrid to do a voiceover as well. I've got an example of that um, in a moment. Let me just close the the page here and carry on um, so you'll get an idea of how that works so this is um this is a google earth project uh, as you can see and this is um uh, this is a, a part of a a tilt webinar so tilt stands for technology and language teaching and myself and my friend helen myers from the association for language learning in the uk we've um planned and organized and hosted uh, over 130 different webinars um, during the pandemic. So this one is by Jimena Lisitra, who is a, a teacher in Madrid. And she talks about uh, different tools here, but um, at the point of the, uh, of the video here, um, she's talking about the uh, Google Earth project she does with her students and how she uses that as a way of promoting culture and for speaking and writing skills. So if you watch that video, it's about two thirds, three quarters of the way in and uh, it will give you an idea of how to do that. So those people who are fans of Google Tour Creator, which no longer exists, annoyingly, uh, this is the, the best equivalent, I think, of being able to reproduce, uh, reproduce the same idea. 
Okay, let's go to the, the next slide. Yeah. There we are. Okay, another website, which is uh, great for uh, 360 photos and also has 360 videos as well, but I'm just going to focus on the photos today because we haven't got lots of time. So this is called Air Pano. It's completely free. I'm just going to click on the screen here and I'm going to just uh, mute the audio because it can get a bit annoying. But here, what you can do is you can go to see um, different places. And as you can see, it's a 360 photo. So you can um, look at the different uh, points here and then you can then click on the different um, views of this particular place. So this is late morning view um, and so on and so forth. This is um, another view here. Uh, which is a height of 200 meters in the morning. And so you can see how it works. So you can basically zoom in uh, using this option there, and you could then base uh, the 360 photo um, as, a, as, a, as a prompt for a, uh, a speaking activity or a writing activity. And it's lovely the way in which the students can explore uh, the picture in more detail because of the fact it's a 360 photo. And then likewise with the 360 video as well, you could also use that uh, as, a, uh, as, a, as a prompt for some speaking work or some language work. The next website we'll have a look at is called Windows Swap. Okay, all of these are free. So Windows Swap is really interesting. You just click here, it says open a new window somewhere in the world. So you have no idea where you're going. And it so happens this time we're going, can you see top right, it says we're in South Australia, uh, uh, looking at a beach. So these are um, essentially, uh, little videos that people have uploaded uh, so it's a crowdsourced uh, project I think and you could ask the students to tell you what they can see this is from a real window in a real house in uh, in this case in, in uh, Australia and then having done that you can then click uh, here oh can you hear the sound as well so you can have the, the authentic sound as well you can now go somewhere else so now we're going to uh, Canada in uh, Regina Saskatchewan so again, um, you can see what's here. This is not a 360 uh, video, but you get the idea. So you can then ask the students about what they can hear, what they can see, and so on and so forth. We just do one more. There we are. That's now in the USA. Um, and there we are, a lo lovely barbecue there, a lovely looking uh, garden, et cetera. Okay, let's, let's carry on. Okay, let me just close some of these windows. So it's nice and easy. Okay, now a similar, website is drive and listen okay now for this one you can have the street noise i'll turn the street noise on once it's loaded up um, and i'll click on amsterdam we love music and you can have the radio running if you want to but i've now got the street noise turned on so again you can basically visit different cities around the world again you could ask them in real time what they can see what's happening let's go to barcelona now so this is not random in the sense that you can choose where you're going okay let's go to delhi and so on and so forth so that's the idea again you can um choose to have the street noise on or off and you can listen to the local radio as well if you want to okay next one is city walks again this is a similar sort of idea uh, you can choose whether you're going at, a, in the daytime or at night time you can have the city sounds if you want to we'll just wait for it to load up there we are so uh, as you can see here you can choose the different place if you don't choose the place you can maybe ask the students where they are get them to work out based on the uh, on the, the things they can see where they are or you can jump to a certain place let's go to Bologna for example, in Italy, and see what they can identify. Or we could go, so let's go somewhere completely different. Let's go to uh, Chiang Mai in, Th in Thailand. Here we are. So you, you see how it works. Okay, let's close that now. So there's lots of other things I want to show you. And I'm running out of time a little bit, but it's all good. This one's called City Guest. So this is more of a game. So uh, for this one, I can scroll down, I can choose, let's say United Kingdom. So you have to guess uh, wherever you may be going, somewhere in the United Kingdom, okay? So I have no idea, but I would imagine that that could be London. So I'm gonna click start guessing and I'm gonna click London and it will tell you how near you are to your guess. 
So, wow, 165 miles out. So it's actually Manchester. And then you just carry on. The risk with this is you could easily lose an hour of your life by doing it, but it's great fun. So that's called City Guesser um, using virtual reality. This is just ThingLink360. That's just, uh, uh, let me show you an example. So this is just a 360 photo that you can upload to ThingLink or they have examples on the website. And it's just a 360 photo, which is allowing you to uh, have it as a, a, you know, as a viewer. So you could then base an activity around what the students can see and so on and so forth. Uh, we had a fantastic Tilt webinar recently, which was um, delivered by Michelle Worgan, who is based in, uh, in uh, Spain. And she's, a, uh, she's an author as well as a former teacher. And as you can see here, she's a freelance ELT writer, and she did a fantastic webinar all around making an interactive 360 adventure using ThingLink, uh, which was fabulous. So I would really encourage you to have a look at that in your own time. Uh, if you're a fan of Bitmojis uh, in the uh, the Emmerfil Twitterati, uh, which Francis has mentioned, uh, here is an example uh, by Leanne, who's made a virtual trip using Bitmojis uh, going to Germany. And so it's uh, it's a fantastic way of giving the students an insight into the culture, uh, the fact they can't actually visit there necessarily to do with COVID, but they can visit it virtually. And so uh, that's also really awesome. And uh, here's uh, uh, maybe a new one for lots of you. This is a, a website called Panoform. And all I've done here is I've created a little three-part cartoon using Storyboard That. I've uploaded it to Panoform, and it makes this sort of 360 um, immersive experience, which you can scroll through um, on your uh, using your mouse on, uh, on the device you're using. It works on iPads as well. And I've just made this into an animated GIF to give you an idea of how this would work. But you could record your screen, record the dialogue while you're moving from uh, slide to slide. And it's really nice. And you can also download guides from Panoform and actually draw your own pictures, upload them onto the platform, and then turn them into immersive um, cartoons. So that's another idea as well. OK. And here's a little Padlet for people to um, get some ideas on some more virtual classrooms or virtual trips which was put together by Esmeralda Salgado uh, from the MFL Tuatarati. And just a thought, if you found this interesting and you'd like some extra help uh, through webinars, then I would love to support you. Here are 18 example sessions. I'd love to design something bespoke for you for an individual department or a district or, uh, or what have you. Get in touch. And here's the presentation. Thank you so much again to, uh, to ITEL, uh, to the British Council. And I can't wait to introduce you to all these amazing uh, UK-based uh, language teachers in the forthcoming weeks. Um, so check out the forthcoming webinars as well. And I will now hand back to Francis. Thank you, Joe. Um, I believe people are still in awe, like, wow, <laughs> some of new information about this virtual reality. So thank you very much for sharing that. I would like to invite questions now from the participants. Uh, if you have questions for Joe or, or also for Pajati, um, Joe and Pajati will be happy to answer your questions. So please address your questions in the Q&A. I would like to invite Pajati as well to join this panel here. And um, because this is the first session of the entire series, so I'm going to be the MC to moderate the question and answer between uh, the audience and Joe and Pajati. But after this, Pajati and Joe will um, host this session, right? The Saturday Tech Talk. So teachers, oh, we have questions here. Okay, so we have one question for both of you. Um, Oh, this is from Colm, actually. Um, Colm, he's interested to know what you think, both of you, uh, about the impact of smart speakers and tools like Siri and a smartphone on improving speaking skills or English skills in general. Um, what, what's your take on that? Sh shall I start this one? Yeah. Is that OK? Um, so uh, I think it's a really interesting question, and I think that potentially for things like um, mechanistic uh, dialogues and what have you. I mentioned Neuralang, for example, in the chat, which is uh, a bot. Um, uh, well, one of, the, one of the features that it has is it uses a, a chat bot for creating your own dialogues. I think that's a really interesting uh, use, of, um, use of AI. But in relation to 
smart speakers, I think there's going to be a big issue around um, privacy and from maybe from parents and parents being worried about what exactly is the smart speaker listening to in the in the classroom. If it's a domestic device, then obviously it's up to the parents to allow that to happen. But I I, I feel that there would be lots of parents that would feel disquiet about let's have it, let's say you know having like a, a, a smart speaker listening to everything that was being said in the classroom. Even so, I can I can see the potential of it helping with. Um, you know, sort of uh, questions like what's the weather like in such such a place or those sorts of like mechanistic, um, you know, simple questions. But I think once the um, once the question gets more uh, conceptual, I think it could maybe uh, suffer. I'm not an, I'm not an expert like Pakjati is in relation to AI, but that's my feeling having attended quite a few sessions around AI uh, as well. But I definitely think there's a, there, there will be a big privacy concern from parents. What do you think, Pakjati? Yeah, that's that's true, uh, Joe, for privacy and so on. But uh, there are something that the especially in the Indonesian context that they can use. Uh, it's to practice uh, with the Siri or with the uh, Hello Google. Uh, for example, asking Hello Google, how many? Uh, who is the tallest person in the world? Then Hello Google will answer that. Hmm. Who is the smartest uh, or who is the oldest person ever live in this uh, globe? They got that kind of answer, you know. Um, what's the extinct animals that they can list that? Um, so ask, ask the student to practice with WH questions. Uh, a lot of elementary or SMP uh, students here in this context uh, practice asking questions to Siri, for example. Can you sing? Then they got amazing uh, answers, sometimes unpredictable, not just yes or no. When they have in pairs with their friend, got limited vocabulary with a person that was students that got a limited vocabulary and try to have a conversation, that's a little bit hard. So uh, maybe it's worth trying <laughs> to ask, uh, to practice the language with uh, Siri or Hello Google and then see what's the uh, What's the, uh, the answer on that? Of course, then uh, maybe it's uh, good also to, uh, to know about facts. You know. um, what is the hottest uh, city now in this time? You know, that kind of things. I think uh, Siri or Google will or might give an uh, unexpected answer. And that's built up curiosity. That's uh, my opinion. Thank you. Okay, so Colm, I hope um, you are satisfied with the answers. Um, so now let's go to another question here. We don't really have a lot of time, but um, to Joe, um, is there any VR or IT tools for drawing or write and writing as an integrated task? Uh, well, I'd have a look at Panoform because with Panoform, I know I showed that storyboard, that option, but if you go to the website, uh, you can click on uh, the guides option. I think it's uh, in the presentation, it's the second link. If you click on that, you can see the guides. You can then download those as a, as a paper resource, print them out, and then uh, draw on them with a, with a crayon, uh, if you like. And then you can then upload them and make them into a virtual reality uh, immersive experience. So I think for primary children, for example, they could draw their own pictures of maybe their bedroom or a front room or, or what have you. Uh, and then it would be as if they were immersed within their own picture, which I just think is a lovely idea. And then they could screen record um, that using, let's say, something like Flipgrid or Screencastify or, or Screenity, uh, and then do a voiceover. So to me, that would be the way that you would um, use that in a, in a real uh, uh, context. Um, I mean, I didn't talk about VR goggles either. I and mean, a lot of these tools you can view through a VR headset, but... Um, in a way, I suppose a lot of the ideas I was suggesting is that it would be done as a whole class activity with lots of questions. I can't really see the day when we're going to have uh, 30 children all wearing VR headsets. I know you can see pictures of those on Twitter, etc., but that tends to be, uh, let's say, Google going to a school and giving them all out. But I don't know how many schools have actually invested in these headsets. And is that what we want in a language of classroom anyway? I think we, we want people to, you know, we want to encourage speaking. And maybe having a headset will... Uh, will um, discourage that. So that's, that's um, uh, those are a few ideas. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a quick one here to Joe. Is that the real time picture on Google Earth or recorded? Just curious. Uh, it's a, it's not a real time picture, um, but I think that um, Google updates their um, uh, the images they take because uh, yeah, it would be I think it would be impossible to have it in, in real time uh, if it's on Google Earth. But um, yeah, but um, uh, I th my understanding is that they, they they are updated from time to time. Um, but um, uh, it, yeah, I don't think it would be. I mean, obviously you can have things like you can have webcams that you can then. Um, get access to and see what's happening in real time on a certain street in a certain place, for example. But but Google Earth, I think, um, uh, it, 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 yeah, it, it's not real time. But in, in a way, that's a good thing, because it means if you wanted to, say, use the search box and actually go to a specific place, as a teacher, you'd want to guarantee that what you've prepared will still be there when you go right. uh, and look at it. Whereas if it was changing all the time, that would be really annoying, I think. Okay, thank you. Um, Pajati, um, Aurelia Jessica Fabiola would like to uh, get your recommendation of the website or application for uh, students to develop AI for education, um, to learn how to develop AI for education. Do you have any suggestions? Uh, I'm an English teacher. <laughs> I don't know how to create an AI. My suggestion is uh, to talk to the uh, students or uh, teachers that's working on the uh, computer, computer science because that must be a specific computer science or working with uh, learning machines and uh, programming and things like that. That's move very fast. That's all I know. But so sorry, I cannot give a recommendation on that. Do you have any idea, Joe? <laughs> well, I, I, I would uh, replicate what you've just said. I'm, uh, I'm interested in the pedagogy in the, you know, in the, in the teaching side of it. I'm not a, I'm not a developer, etc. So, um, what I try to do is I try to, you know, you say using social media or through my or reading blogs, uh, I just try to find the, the the tools which I think are going to be useful for language teachers, and then I then try to uh, promote them through my own through my own account and try to find solutions to um, problems that people might have. So if people feel they need to practice speaking more, then I can make various recommendations be it using VR, AI, or any other tool, which I think could be pedagogically useful. Okay, uh, now uh, uh, following up on that, uh, Joe, uh, we have Raina here asking, there are so many tools uh, available now in this digital um, world. So uh, sometimes teachers are confused about which applications are good and reliable to use. So what's your techniques, Pajati as well, this goes to both of you. What's your tips to sort them out? Um, the ones for you? Yeah, I, th I think that's a great question. To, to, the, the solution that I found most effective is to be part of a social media community. So uh, you mentioned at the beginning about the MFL Twitterati, which is a community of language teachers, language consultants like myself and language associations. And there are 5,000 members of the, um, the MFL Twitterers list, which is um, what I uh, uh, curate myself. So literally every day I'm taking people off and adding people to the list, but the hashtag is used by people from all over the world. And I think um, by following that hashtag for say, I don't know, 10 minutes a day, while you're having a cup of tea or the beverage of your choice, you'd be able to work out pretty quickly what are the um, uh, the most favorite tools that people are, are recommending on a, on a daily basis. And um, you can also obviously ask a question. You can follow some uh, someone, ask them a direct question or ask a question using the hashtag. Um, that will no doubt be retweeted and um, very quickly, you can you can find out um, those sorts of answers. And what's been interesting is during the pandemic, you've got new Facebook groups that have started up that um, that are particularly talking about, um, let's say, a particular platform, be it Microsoft Teams or or Google Classroom. So there's lots of teachers that have been sharing all around those platforms, and because because the, the the platform is really important. I think if you're working just in a Microsoft School or just in a Google School, then you want to know about your own context. And in the past, those sorts of conversations were much smaller. In other words, the number of people involved were, 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 were fewer, whereas now in some of those Facebook groups within you know a, a month or so, you had like X number of thousand members. So the conversation has got much bigger. So I would encourage people to follow a hashtag, be it um, 
uh, uh, MFL Twitterati or ELT chat or whatever hashtag you, uh, is part of the community you want to be part of. Join some Facebook groups, ask lots of questions and, uh, and, and work out what are the best things out there. But there are so many people who are just willing to help and support. There's no lack of support. It's, it's essentially, you know, 24-7 uh, the support. You just have to ask the question. Right, that's true. Pajati, any tips from you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, on top of uh, what you just mentioned, that you have to follow a lot of uh, people in the Twitter and the Facebook and the social media, LinkedIn and so on. Uh, usually what I do, I'm thinking of if I'm preparing a lesson, oh yeah, I want my student to be able to read, for example. Then I go to Google. Reading... Uh, AI that might help uh, first year students or undergraduate, then I Google that and then I find maybe more than 10. Then I have to try and then uh, start thinking uh, which one is uh, appropriate for my settings. Because there are a lot of apps that not necessarily appropriate for a uh, place to another place. You know, it, um, you have to try it first, but that's, that's the way I do it. And most of the time it works. I want my students to, to uh, be able to correct their own grammar. Has to, and then I put AI and then search. Then uh, I'll find something. And then uh, there are a lot of reviews as well. So, you know, Google is here to stay. And okay. again, you can go uh, ask uh, Joe in uh, Twitter and a lot of people will answer that for sure. And I also think YouTube is, is an amazing place. Yeah. If you want to learn how to use a particular tool, just do a search for the name of that tool and tutorial, and it will come up. Um, and also the idea of these Saturday Tech Talks is really to try and bring together um, you know, uh, expert teachers in their areas talking about uh, different ideas like collaboration and independent learning and so on and so forth and recommending different tools, but uh, recommending them um, with the, the lens of, a, of an expert practitioner. So I think, again, the idea of these... Um, the, these uh, these videos or these webinars, should I say, uh, is to give people a shortcut to the good stuff, the cream of the crop, as it were. But I think that social media is a great way of finding out what are the, the best tools that are recommended. But what's important as well is to talk about, as you mentioned, Jati, to, to talk about the context. So what is it pedagogy that you're trying to do? And once people know that, they can then give um, uh, specific advice, I think. So that's really important as well. Yeah, but right. uh, most, uh, um, most of the uh, people will ask me questions like this. What's the best apps for uh, listening? There are really <laughs> many. So <laughs> if you know what uh, what you really want, uh, apps to help you and you are going to help your students, then uh, we'll limit the number of the apps on that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pajati. So, uh, of course, don't forget to stay tuned in the next uh, session of Saturday Tech Talk, because as you can see in the chat, um, teachers, you can also help each other during this webinar, sharing what you have been uh, doing. Uh, so thank you very much, Pajati and Joe, for sharing your um, experience in this first session. And we look forward to having you back uh, two weeks from now with um, a different pr presenters, uh, two presenters, one from UK and also one from uh, ITEL. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, if you can give a clap uh, to the uh, speakers today, Pajati and Joe, Joe and Jati. Um, and they will come back two weeks from now to uh, continue the Saturday Tech Talk where we can learn together on what we can do to improve our teaching using technology. Uh, we have a lot of questions asking about certificate. So ladies and gentlemen, you can download your certificate uh, by completing the exit ticket. Um, we are sh showing the uh, bit.ly here and also you can click in the chat. Um, I'm sure it's somewhere there in, in the middle of your hands, uh, clapping there. Please go to the exit ticket and, of course, continue learning with the British Council. Uh, next week, the British Council will have a webinar on climate change in English language education. Um, you can register from the link provided in the poster. You can go back to YouTube and see the link in the poster later on. And also there's another one, um, the, Brit the new British Council MOOC. 
it is open and running at the moment and teachers you're gonna love this it's free so continue learning from each other continue learning from um, the webinars the, the books and don't forget to come back two weeks from now to the next session of saturday tech talk i'm francis inanu signing off bye bye